Good morning. It is a joy to welcome you here this morning. We've had a little bit of a snafu. The screens are fine, but the projector is fine. The computer, on the other hand, is not fine. So without the computer, we can't really have screens, but that's okay. It's a good Sunday probably to have a bunch of new songs for us to do, so you won't be familiar with them. So that's also okay. I invite you to stand up. It's a joy to have you here this morning. We're glad you're here with us. And uh, we're going to praise God in the house of the Lord. John Denver, for some strange reason. Oh. 
all my life. All I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountains high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. Good morning, everybody. Was that fun? You want to sing, thank God I'm a country boy, don't you? Yeah, that's right. It's so good to see you here in worship today. My name is Reverend Jim Oman. I'm one of the pastors here. And today, our whole theme is about creativity and how we need to be more like children when we think about how God works in our lives. And so we're going to begin today doing something different. Now, we plan to have the words on the screen, but obviously that won't happen. So we're going to make it a little interactive now. So you're going to have a phrase to say at the end of each phrase that I say, and your words are, children are our joy. Can we try it? Children are our joy. Oh, you can do better. Let's do a little louder than that. Children are our joy. Okay, here we go. This is how we come into worship today on this day to have some fun, right? Sometimes we have fun when we praise God. Running, jumping, falling, laughing, singing, dancing, and climbing. Children are our joy. Today we are all children gathered to praise and worship you, loving God. Children are our joy. Rolling, smiling, hugging, shouting, crying, cheering, painting, toddling, drawing. Children are our joy. Today we are all children of God gathered to bless our children, children Children of joy, short and tall, thick and thin, dark and light, bright and full of smiles, changing and growing, children are our joy. I will close with these words. We pause to remind ourselves of our promises to our children, to guard, to guide, and defend them, to protect them from danger seen and unseen to live holy lives in front of them, to never stop trying to be spiritually alive, members of church, and ambassadors for Christ everywhere we go. Amen. Again, I want to welcome all of you here into this time of holy worship today, whether you're online or you're here in our sanctuary. Please remember, as always, to fill out connect cards. That's the way that you can communicate 
changes in your email address, phone, or if you need information, if you want to talk with a pastor, if you have a prayer concern. We take those things seriously. We get them every week, and so it's important that you do that for us as we uh, try to be connected as a community. I just have a few announcements this morning, and the first one has to do with our mission opportunity in the month of June, and that is our Shelter Connect uh, Collection. If you've kind of paid attention to the temperatures the last few weeks, you know if you're an unsheltered person how difficult it is to function when it's almost 100 degrees. And so we're collecting items for those persons. That particular collection ends at the end of this week. So I would encourage you during the week, anytime, drop by during the office hours and drop off something. The information about that is on our website and you can call the office if you want to know more about what the needs are. I believe it's laundry detergent if I didn't, if not mistaken, which could be pretty important in this heat. The second announcement is that we have coming up an Enneagram retreat and we've talked about this before in a sermon series and it has to do with how our personality traits combined with our ability to be disciples of Christ and how we can learn how to be more faithful by understanding ourselves. And we have a retreat coming up for that on July 23rd. If you're interested in being a part of that, you can simply uh, call the office and sign up and make sure if you have uh, questions, you reach out to one of the pastors here and we will give you the information you need about that. And the last uh, announcement is Obviously, it's summertime, and we have coming up this month our first summer camp activity, our summer jam thing, on July 13th, and it is a water night for all ages. Families can come, grandchildren, everyone can come, and it is going to be a lot of fun outside here in our facility. It's just the beginning of our summer jam activities for children and for families to come together and to have some fun on a Wednesday night. It concludes with our summer camp, which is July 31st through August 3rd. So if you're interested, you want to register a child, a grandchild, a neighbor, you can go to the website and you can do all that there or talk to any of us about that coming up. And the last thing is we obviously have children's activities going at both of our services. So please remember that if you ever want someone to go down and have a different kind of a worship in our children's area, you can leave at any time and take them down there or check them in as you come in to worship. May God bless us today as we worship God together. So Pastor Jim just mentioned summer camp. Anybody go to camp during summertime? I'm guilty. Yes, I've been many times, both as camper and counselor. So thought children's morning, joyful songs. We'll do a couple summer camp type songs. So I'm going to invite you to stand up. I hope you know these. I think you will. The first one's uh, Down in My Heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in And 
if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Ouch. Sit on attack. Ouch. Sit on attack. If the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Ouch. Sit on attack. Tuesday, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love. Thank you guys. Have a seat. Thank you for your playfulness and joy today. I thank our worship team, music, media for all they have done to help us prepare for the day and the way you just lifted our spirits there. For those of you that might have come in after Chris named um, the obvious reasons why we can't see things, we our computer died. Our screens and our projector are fine, but um, the computer. Now, um, I don't know that there has been a Sunday that we have spent uh, a month preparing images for like this Sunday. So um, when we pray right now, and you hear me say sometimes, uh, pray for me as I pray for you. Um, I'm, I'm still adjusting to how, how this is going to come about today, um, which is the perfect Sunday for this to happen. Loving God, we thank you for the way in which you invite us to share with you. We come to celebrate you and worship you today. May we be vessels that receive your goodness and grace so that we may share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't even know if I said my name um, just then, but I am Pastor Karen Hayden for those that I may not have met, and it is a joy to have all of you with us. We are talking about marveling playfulness and joy today. Playfulness is a channel through which God's love can flow into our lives, deep and wide, right? Laughter and play are two of God's good gifts to us. They are health nurturing and enlivening. For adults, we might say our earliest Awareness of God's pleasure was in play as a child. For all of us today, we consider how through play we get outside of ourselves and interact with God. So you were given prompts when you came in today, things to play with, see, touch. Um, I'm going to lead us in an exercise at prayer time in a little bit, but... Um, you don't have to keep it all like over to the side. You can play with it and create as we go along today. Because true play doesn't have those limits. It's creative, liberating, relational, and vital to a healthy spirituality. You know, Jesus reminded us about creativity, play, or that sense of play when he talked about our preparation for eternity. Do you remember? He talked about wonder. Unless you change and become like children, you will never enter heaven. And we recall that uh, play can be as easy for children as breathing. But if you aren't a child and you think you have um, a sophisticated or uh, um, more mature games that you like to play, you might be interested in the podcast BoardGameFaith.com. It explores the intersection of board games, religious faith, and spirituality. Okay, there's something for everybody, right? BoardGameFaith.com. 
The co-hosts are Christian pastors, one um, Methodist pastor um, here in Springfield, not on our staff. And they ask, what does it mean theologically that we as humans like to play board games? In one episode, they discuss how play is core to human experience. It relates to our spiritual, mental, and physical health. Reverend Daniel Hilty says, play makes life better. In play, we can cease from our cares and our worries. Recall Ecclesiastes 3, 4. There is a right time to cry and another to laugh, a right time to lament and another to cheer. In play, we affirm our goodness and our role as God's children. I commend to you Psalm 16, but I will share with you verse 11. You make known to me the paths of life. You fill me with joy in your presence. For the gift of Scripture, thanks be to God. It seems that we are born understanding how to play, and free play um, is something that um, maybe goes uh, away um, in some places, or it weans and wanes of um, how important it is for different people. But those who believe in free play talk about its worth for imagination, creativity, and even negotiating problem-solving. Once upon a time, I won a prize on the radio, and it was an extreme lawn makeover. As the people came to my house, the lawn care persons, they gave me a puzzle to put together. This was, this was how we were going to like figure out how to work on my yard. And when they were done with this particular puzzle, they said, what shape speaks to you the most? Like, from doing this puzzle, what, what shape do you like the best? And as I shared it, that was the main thing they used to design what my yard was going to look like. I think of all of you and the ways that you create or problem solve um, in your daily life, whether it's in work or, or just um, how we care for ourselves. Play, in a sense, is much more reflective of who we are than our busyness and desire to produce. And if there's anybody that I'm preaching to today, she's standing in front of you. Play is not an activity, but rather an attitude. Sam Keen calls this attitude wonder. My word for it today is marveling. That, that idea of marveling, wondering about something, stimulates our human divine interaction like nothing else. Imagine how the wow or the wonder that we participate in opens us to the world around us. As God's image bearers, you know, that's what we are, should we not acknowledge play and creativity ourselves? So let's stop and, and imagine for a moment um, without all the images that I had for today. So you get to use your own images. Children at play. Whether that's after pickup from Kingswood racing on the lawn out here, or it's watching children at a pool, Whatever that might be, when you think about children at play, how does that lift you? How does imagining children at play restore you? And then I want you to put yourself in God's place just for this moment and imagine God watching you play or create. 
And then, have you ever considered the image of God at play? I know that in a lot of photos or pictures, paintings, representations of Jesus, we feel like we've scored when we find the laughing Jesus, right? Um, it, it doesn't seem to come up as much as others. But imagine God at play, perhaps an image of a continuously creating God gives you new life and perspective today. It starts in the beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1 reminds us God created. Creativity began with God. It is central to the nature of God. Think about how our tradition, everything begins with God playing in the mud. Genesis 2, God forms humankind as a potter forms clay. This biblical story isn't about God in a celestial place waving a magic wand, but actually getting involved with becoming a part of us as life is breathed into us. And if that's not enough, God became human in Jesus, tromping around in the murkiness of life on earth at times celebrating, dancing at a wedding, other times writing in the sand as a way to teach and problem solve, at other times grieving in the grime. So when we think about this Genesis 2 as God, the master potter, scooping up dust from the earth, adding a little water and breathing life, yeah, that adding water is important to the story. Because in order to be shaped, the clay, the dirt, has to be moistened. But often, we don't like to be moistened because it's the precursor to molding. And we find that a little bit uncomfortable. We're going to be changed. But there's another way to look at it. In the lens of creativity, when we're being molded, we're not finished yet. We are clay in the hands of a creating and recreating God. And sometimes, again, pointing the finger, um, we're too hindered from fully living and creating because of our need to make it just right or appear perfect to others. Our days become more life-giving when we surrender to the creative image and energy of God who finds us beautiful already. We are God's beloved masterpieces. And yet all is not done. God is present alongside us, molding and shaping. Saint Irenus prays this prayer. It is not thou that shapest God. It is God that shapest thee. If thou, thou art the work of God, await the hand of the artist who does all things in due season. Offer him thy heart, soft and trackable, and keep the form in which the artist has fashioned thee. Let thy clay be moist, lest thou grow hard and lose the imprint of his fingers." Julia Cameron says, creativity is God's gift to us. Using our creativity is our gift back to God. For those traveling the spiritual pathway and looking for expressions of God, we don't need to overlook creativity and play in whatever form that might be. For some of us, it is, it is formal games and sports that puts us in a place to recognize the value of community. And then we think of ways in which we might be um, creating art or memory books for family and a one-on-one -on -one with ourselves and God as we do that. But creativity partially reflects the image of God within each of us. You think you can't create or play? 
This week on my Facebook feed was a video of um, someone's aunt. I honestly cannot remember which friend it was. So it might be one of your aunts. I cannot remember. Tim, an 80-something-year-old aunt was being pulled behind a boat in an inner tube. Okay, it was more of a fancy chair, right? But just like you, Grace was guiding her. So I know some people got a little alarmed why is an 80-year-old being pulled behind a boat in an inner tube. But she was having the time of her life. I saw another image on social media not too long ago about a son taking his mother to the ocean. Lovely that they could um, watch the waves and imagine God's creativity, but the son went further than that, and I do not know how he did it. He got her into the water with her wheelchair. It shows her splashing as the waves come up and her delight. So, Jan Phillips reminds me that it's blasphemous for us to say we can't find a way to play or I'm not creative. Jan says all we do is create. We have desires and we create experiences from our desires. We wake up every day with a blank canvas and for 24 hours and every night we go to bed having created the masterpiece of that day. We do this consciously or unconsciously, but we do it nevertheless. So I ask, time, I ask, are there times when you miss the incarnation, God's presence, because of your lack of awareness? It's not because God isn't there, is it? But we experience God when we're more fully aware one exercise that I, I read this week or this past month in preparing was just about focusing on the color blue. <laughs> that, that, that really stretched me, right? Um, but as a, as a part of that, I have um, been swimming with a friend early in the morning for the past two weeks. And um, as I began, I looked at it as a duty, um, and I was excited that I was going to get to exercise. But on the very first day when I finished, my friend's a little more athletic and a better swimmer than I. I was, I was done for the first day, and I decided to float. And as I did, my head was partially underwater, so I had silence. I love silence. I don't always have silence in my house. So this was a moment for me. But as I was floating on my back, looking up at the trees and the sky above me, I felt a sense of being buoyed in God's grace. And then I thought about other things. But it was in that moment that I realized Spiritual practices can come in different ways. And in that moment, for me, it was simply moving out of what I thought I was going to do um, into a place of play. So how often do we go on with our lives without missing a step? And we miss a holy moment. Or even worse, we miss Jesus passing us by. There is within and around us something beyond us, something beyond our understanding and our control, and, and sometimes that can be frightening. But when we connect with the mystery and wonder around us, even so brief of a second, we move towards abundant life. Anne Lamont says it this way, Gorgeous, amazing things come into your lives when we pay attention. Mangoes, grandnieces, bach, ponds. This happens more often when we have as little expectation as possible. If you're going around the world saying, well, that's is pretty much the way I expected to see it, you're in trouble. If you say that, are you even acknowledging that there is more? 
Anne says, I would never say this to you, but Anne says, at that point you have to ask, why are you even here? Because astonishing material and revelation appear in our lives all the time. Let it be. Unto us much is given. Look at the masterpieces here. Deepening our sense of basic wonder and goodness in spite of troubles can help us opening ourselves to experiencing God's smile. So, after the first service, a former teacher shared with me something that she used to practice in her classroom with children, and I will share it with you now. When they came upon moments of wow, they would do this. If you're in the back, W O W, wow, to be able to share that with others. I know everyone here has had a moment of wow in their lives. The question might be how many do you have a day? In her book, Help Thanks, Anne Lamont names one of our essential prayers should be that three letter word. Wow. She says, Wow is often offered with a gasp, a sharp intake of breath. When we can't think of another way to capture the sight of shocking beauty or destruction of a sudden unbidden insight or an unexpected flash of grace, wow means we are not dulled to wonder. We click into fully being present when we are stunned into that gasp. Wow is about having one's mind blown by the mesmerizing or the miraculous. The veins in a leaf, bird song, or volcanoes. Many people believe the word comes from the Scottish language. You explain wow on first tasting Halva, and upon hearing that the Scottish not only eat haggis, but love haggis. Wow is the child seeing the ocean for the first time. Wow is the teenager's Christmas car, secondhand, but still. Wow is John Muir, Walt Whitman, Mary Oliver saying that the son was the best preacher there ever was. Wow comes in all shapes and sizes like people. There are lowercase wows. A lowercase wow might be seeing a kid execute a dive at the town pool or coming upon a blanket of poppies in the field that was destroyed by a fire last summer. And then there are the uppercase wows, probably the ones you imagined a moment ago. Yosemite, fireworks, watching puppies being born at the neighbors when you were six. Remember that? First, semi sort of being able to imagine the sheer size of dinosaurs at age five or six. Trying to comprehend how a brontosaurus could be 75 feet long. What does the brontosaurus's feet look like? As you studied dinosaurs in school or in a book you took out from the library because you had to know more about them, you learned that they were doomed and they died out and you saw paintings of them with their dinosaur families. And then they were gone. Dinosaurs went kaput. When you're a little kid, that's about as trippy as science gets. These huge creatures once roamed the earth and now they're fossils. Now let's not even get into planets. That's when it all becomes terrifying for a decade or two. Not just there are other planets, which is awful enough upon hearing, but there are also other suns. This seems so wrong. This can't be. It's too much. And then it turns out there are hundreds of suns and then thousands. You could have a nervous breakdown as seven years old trying to take this all in. And then at eight, when you learn, there's a hundred other universes. The only good news is that somehow we ended up on the one planet where someone thought up Monopoly and Oreos. Our awareness of the wow can give us life, truly life. Because if we stay where we are, where we're stuck, where we're comfortable and safe, we die. 
We become like mushrooms living in the dark with poop up to our chins. If you want to know what you already know, you're dying. You're saying, leave me alone. I don't mind this little rat hole. It's warm and dry. Really, it's fine. When nothing new can get in, that's death. New is life. Imagine the new. Imagine how creativity can stir you. It's an essential tool for shaping our souls. It provides a pathway to find the fierce truth within. And it also fine-tunes our listening. When we are creative and open and aware, we see and hear things differently. And then this shapes our creativity again. It's a beautiful cycle. Whenever we embrace creativity and love, we come closer to embodying the person God intended us to be. My question for you today is, where is God calling you to co-create? To see something new or offer your sense of wow? Maybe your creative expression comes in your own individual way. Whether or not you're ever going to be known as a master, guitarist, painter, sculptor, poet, dancer. God made this need and loves us and loves to see us express our creativity. Participating in the creative acts helps us to see ourselves as we are and what we might become. Like prayer, the creative acts draws us into an authentic life that awaits us, that joins us with God. I close today with a prayer of Connie Peters as she prays and imagines the master artist. Help me live in the stroke of your brush in your living colors. Help me sing the notes of your music in your joy and harmony. Help me dance in step with your tune with arms lifted in praise. Help me live according to the story you write, being patient during revision. Help me play like a musical instrument, according to your rhythm and pattern, to be a creative expression of who you are. Amen. In just a moment, we are going to have a time of prayer where you are able to get out um, the prompts that we had for you, whether it is putty or Play-Doh Play or a half-begun art sheet, markers, the front of your bulletin that you maybe haven't finished. I don't know what it is. You might hum, God's got the whole world in God's hands. I don't care whatever it is, but you are given this invitation in just a moment. And, and if none of that feels good to you, then I would at least invite you to hold out your hands. Share with God what you need to share. Turn your hands over and then open your hands again so that God might fill you with grace today. We, we could do this on our own, and I invite you to do that on your own. But we also come together each week in community prayer as we recall um, the needs and um, celebrations that we have in the life of the church. Today, we remember the family of Kay Thomas. Kay died this week, and uh, we remember her place um, in the history of this church as a charter member from her youth and um, give thanks for her family's place among us. So now I invite you to sense and create with God and in a few minutes I will close us with the Lord's Prayer. 
and maybe a different style that you've heard before. I'll be reading from the message in Matthew 6. But now might we sense and create. Father in heaven, reveal who you are, set the world right, do what's best, as above, so below, keep us alive with three square meals, keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others, keep us safe from ourselves and the devil, you're in charge, you can do anything you want, you're ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. Continuing in a practice of creative problem solving and love and care for our community, we receive an offering every week. Maybe you don't think that as problem solving, but uh, like the lawn care team that came uh, to my house as a gift. I believe that there are people here uh, who seek ways in which we can care for our community and offer our gifts and graces. Whether that is a financial offering or perhaps um, you and your creation, 
and creative care might think of a way to serve another. As the offering plates are passed this day, I would ask you to consider what it is that you co-create with God this day and moving forward. Amen.
What brings us joy? What slows us down? What gives us hope? What makes us think? What invites us to one? Might it have something to do with the holy? May we go and sense and serve God this day. Amen.